Chadwick, it is a pleasure to thank welcome you. you here. Thank you, Brian. It really is. Thank you, thank you. It really is. So this was just the easiest job of your life, right? I mean, what is it? It's nothing to play the godfather of soul, oh. the hardest working man in show business, an icon of music. You must have said, sure. No, no, no. <laughs> this It's funny because we were on set and... Uh, Everybody would be like, you have to be the hardest working man in show business to play the hardest working man. Because, you know, I had to catch up. I had to, like, dance all the time and, and, you know, learn songs all the time. And they, you know, I would never really stop on set. Like, for 15 hours, sometimes I would still be going. But today uh, you're not wearing a pompadour. No. There's no cape. Uh, no. I didn't see you go into a split when you came in here. No, no splits anymore. No splits. So you've kind of said a little bit of a goodbye to James. He, the um, like the first month after we shot, I didn't listen to any James Brown music. I didn't want to see any James Brown. I, I better say I did want to see it. And I did want to listen to it, but I kept myself from doing it. Mm -hmm. So. For your own sanity. Just, just to get, get him out of my system. Because you know what? I think none of us wanted to stop shooting this movie. Like, we actually got snowed in in Mississippi. Like, it's, it was, you know, that icy winter. And um, we got snowed in down there, and everybody was kind of happy that, that we didn't have to say goodbye to each other, like producers and directors. Like, we still got along and everything. So. Uh, well, that rarely happened. It rarely, yeah, yeah. It was it was a weird, weird experience. But yeah, it took a it took a minute to to let him go. We're just meeting today, so I have no idea. I think a lot of people would have no idea of who you are as a person. When you right. played Jackie Robinson, we saw you play a guy who kept it inside. Mm -hmm. He was he was cautious. He was feeling, and we knew the feeling was there. Mm -hmm. But with James Brown, it's the guy who keeps nothing inside. Right. This is this is just. Right. Who are you close to, as Chadwick? Who who is it? Uh, which one am I closer yeah. to? I, I think I have a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying? I think I have. You have to. I, I think when any time you play a character, you have to search for them inside you, mm -hmm. and um, you have to, you know, sort of call them in. Uh, but I have, I have a little bit of both. I, I think, I think Jackie Robinson. It's like you said. It's, it's uh, the hard thing about that movie when, when Brian Helgeland was talking to me about it he he basically was like i'm not going to give you a lot of words to do this it's a it's a um, it's a silent performance you know and that was that's a difficult thing to do as well and so i think when people watch it it's it's like it doesn't have all the flash that that this has but but um i felt like it was an extremely an extremely difficult thing to do you know so i I wouldn't say I'm like either one. I I think I'm sort of in between, and there's some there's some other things. There's little that, pieces, yeah, that little pieces. Like yeah. That. Well, how much in these two roles did you? Are you already prepped to do? How much uh, baseball? How much baseball did you play when you were Jack? Uh, the funny thing is, we took they took a lot of baseball out of the movie. It was just so much baseball mm -hmm. that, you know, you couldn't have very, it's similar to like some of the performances in, in Get On Up. And so when we had a lot of spring training, it was like three and a half months mm -hmm. of spring training. For, but did you play before? No. I was not a baseball player. So you're not a baseball player and you do 42. Right. And now I'm assuming you were huge at home on karaoke night with James Brown. No. This was a, no. No, no. no so I'm there not. was none of this. No, Nobody no. would have said, we must have Chadwick for this. I, I was trying to understand when we did the first test how Tate <laughs> was like, you know, he was adamant about me doing it. Like, I, I didn't understand. Like, I was like, well, I didn't really sing and dance for him. Like, what? <laughs> like, how do they know? Uh, but he just had some feeling somewhere. Like, I'm not a musical guy. Like, I don't even like musicals. Like, you know, I, it has to be a great musical for me to like mm -hmm. it. I'm, I'm very often like, okay, why are they singing right now? Like, why did they... <laughs> There's no reason. Why for did this they thing? feel the need to go with the song? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's not my background mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, that's what that's what seems so amazing. Now we hear mostly the vocals of James Brown, so right. 
you're basically lip syncing, mouthing this. I'm, well, if if you were there, yeah, while we were shooting it, you would have heard me singing. So you're singing. I'm singing, but I'm singing. So I'm singing two. Yeah, there's the playback, and we're going at the same time. So I'm singing two playback. Um, and there, because we're using live recordings. You know, the live recordings of his albums, mm -hmm. those masters are not as as uh, pristine as the studio recordings. So there's some times where I have to fill in some moments. or So it's a sort of a mixture. My voice is in there uh, at times. And then there are some other times when it's not a concert where you do hear my voice. Like, you, you hear, my, hear my, voice, my voice by itself. What about the moves? I mean, the, that's the splits alone. You, you, are you saying how did we do it? How did you do it? I mean, was it CGI? Are you going to confess to me, Chadwick, that that's no, what it was? Or no. did you do it? Did you get down there and then get back up like that? I, I, I did it. Yeah, absolutely. A deep bow to you. Yeah, I get yeah. That. yeah. Uh, over and over again, we did it. You know, um, it just honestly, it was we practiced. You know, we trained. We would do. You know number after number after number like we would repeat um a number and and uh even when you when you when you were dead tired you would have to do, do it, it again well you had you know you also have mick jagger in as as, as right. a producer on this movie who knew james brown right did what did mick what advice did you get from him he basically tried to give me what uh james brown gave him he he learned uh, how to captivate an audience. When you see Mick Jagger, you're seeing a guy that knows how to um, control the band and, and um, vibe off of, the, off, the, off, of the, off of the band and vibe off of the audience at the same time. So we would go through songs and just listen to them. And he would say, you know, do you hear that? Let's rewind it back. Let's listen to this again. This is what he's doing in this, this moment. This is what he's doing in that moment. Um... You know, you saw how passionate he was about, you know, the music and and uh, just the energy that James Brown would bring to a performance. Uh, it, it was just fun. You get to, to be able to, to do that with Mick Jagger, to listen to his take on I think that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I think it's... It's a rare... Yeah. Like, who gets to do that? You know, so... Uh, just these tea parties, listening parties um, <laughs> with Mick. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, as we end, I want to ask you about you looking at you in Get On Up and saying, is there a moment, a scene in this movie that just resonates for you as Chadwick as opposed to saying it's the best scene, it was the toughest scene? Uh, just something that when you look at it, you say, yeah, I, this, I feel this. Uh, particularly strongly. I, I absolutely feel that way about the scene with uh, with Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think this that, is your mother in the yes, movie coming back to see. You. Yeah, okay. like it actually. You know, a lot of times when you're watching yourself, you don't get touched the same way that other people do. But it's just something about that scene. It's just so emotional and so, you know, she was amazing in that scene and just just to be on screen with her uh while she was in that state um, you know there were things that happened in that scene that were not planned and uh you know it resonates every time i watch it because it, you know that spontaneity was there and and uh the emotions were there so it's it's pretty much her scene and you're reacting to it mm -hmm. and again it's this Yes. You did these things to me. You weren't here for me. Yeah. And then watching that happen. Yeah. We always end, and this is going to sound strange, but this is what this show is. It always ends with a little bit of song. <laughs> now, I hope you're not going to force me I, I've been saying to have no. you move your lips, and then I have to put in James Brown. So is there some music that you listen to that's not James Brown, that isn't anything about this, that you can do this little smidgen of for tiniest bit of? Uh, I'm glad you said not James Brown. Brown. That's, that's cool. No, I'm not asking for that. I'm asking uh. for something that's in your head. It might have been what you grew up hearing. 
If I ever leave you, baby, you can say I told you so. And if I ever hurt you, you know I hurt myself as well. Is that any way for a man to carry on? Do you think I want my loved one gone? Said I love you more than you'll ever know. More, more, more than you'll ever know. Something like hey. You know, I want the Chadwick Boseman CD. Donnie Hathaway. Come, I know, but it's yeah. like, whoa, <laughs> you know, a pleasure to talk to you. Really pleasure was, really pleasure. was. Wow. Pleasure.